could you please introduce yourself to the readers of Fuck.nl? Of course. My name is Michel Louis Langevin and I play drums for Voiva. And your nickname is? Louis? Louis. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you want me to? Uh, well, no. All right. Where do you get? A, where did that nickname come from? Because um, a couple of things. When we started, I was still going to university, and because of the uh, homework and schedule, uh, sometimes I wouldn't show up at rehearsals, and uh, they call me away. But also because of my concepts and drawings, it's all combined. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, can you tell me something about? For the people who, uh, the few people, I believe, who don't know Voivod yet, how it all started for the, with the band. Um, well, it started basically uh, in the early 80s when uh, Piggy and I uh, jammed together. We shared a love for uh, the new wave of British heavy metal, and then uh, we jammed a few times. We really got along, and then we started to look for other people, and. Uh, Around uh, 81, 82, uh, actually it was, uh, in 81, uh, we found Blackie. He was a metal DJ in the club where we were hanging out at. Okay. And uh, he was also playing uh, a, a New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And uh, so uh, we approached him and uh, we tried to jam together and it, it, it was uh, fine and we uh, it glued very well. Uh, but um, I thought I was not good enough. And I took a year by myself to uh, to rehearse alone, and then uh, and me, in the meantime, uh, Piggy and Blackie uh, rehearsed together and got tighter. So a year after, uh, in '82, uh, I joined back, and then we started looking for a singer. And uh, in uh, uh, early '83, uh, we found Snake, and um, so. Uh, the lineup was set up and we immediately started to uh, write songs. Uh, we were huge fans of uh, Motorhead and Venom, also uh, hardcore stuff, the GBH and Discharge and such. Yeah. And a lot of progressive rock, uh, King Crimson, Van der Graaff Generator, uh, so we sort of blended everything. And not to forget Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next question is a question that has been on my mind for a very long time. The name Foyfot. Yeah. Is it only the name of the character that has been on the first albums, or is there also another meaning of the word? Well, it's the name of the, the character uh, that's evolving through uh, the first five albums, but um, um, I, I picked it up in the book by uh, Bram Stalker, uh, Dracula. And that's where they explained that uh, uh, Dracula was a voivod, some kind of a king or a prince, you know. And uh, so uh, I just used it and uh, turned it, turned him into like a nuclear vampire, a more sci-fi oriented. Kind of like a vampire overlord. A vampire overlord in a post-nuclear world, you know. Cool. Uh, after Nothing Face, he disappeared suddenly. Yeah. But I heard once that there were ideas for another album to end of the cycles with Well, me. yeah, I mean, we actually did the sixth uh, chapter for Phobos, and then uh, we uh, wrote an album which was the final uh, chapter of the story, and we were supposed to uh, record it with uh, Steve Albini, and we wrote the whole album and demoed it, but then the, we split the band in, in 2000. And uh, we never actually recorded the album uh, professionally. We have demos, but uh, yeah. so it was meant to be the final chapter of the story. But after we, Nothing Face, yeah, we hoped after Phobos. Oh, uh, Phobos is also Phobos is a, in the yeah, Phobos oh. is a sixth, a sixth chapter, and we wrote the seventh chapter uh, and put it into music after we had the accident in Germany. But then. Um, uh, we had lost momentum with the accident, and we the, the moral was not there anymore. And we, we began, I decided to split the band, the, but then we reformed in 2001 uh, with Snake, and then the Jason Newsted joined in 2002. How was it to play with Jason? Wasn't that strange at that moment? Not really, because we we had known Jason since the 80s, and uh, we jammed with him many times. 
Um, in the 90s, we went to his studio, Piggy and I, many times. Uh, we had a trio together, and um, uh, so it, it, it felt natural for us when we reformed with Snake in 2001 and wrote a bunch of songs. It felt natural to phone Jason and ask him if he would play the bass on the album. He was really excited and eventually decided to join the band because he was he left Metallica and he was having a great time with us and so uh, he ended up joining the band and we did three albums with him. Okay. But I read in an interview with you that he, in the beginning when he came up in the studio he didn't uh, dare to turn up his bass. Yeah, we had to tell him to turn it up and uh, he was like, are you serious? Like, yeah, yeah, we want to hear it, you know, he's a very good player. So he, he was impressed that we were asking him to like crank it up, you know. Yeah, I, I love playing. You know, I really loved playing with him because it's really tight, and uh, he also reminds me of a hero of mine, uh, Gizer Butler, and uh, so he has a Black Sabbath feel to his playing. So he brought that side to uh, Voivod. Your most recent release. The Post Society EP yeah. was the first one you recorded with the new lineup that also played today. Yeah. How was it to play with like, let me say, two youngsters <laughs> in the studio? <laughs> it's really cool. They're really, really involved in the writing the music, and, uh, and so they 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 are childhood friends, like Snake and I are childhood friends. So it's to uh, to uh, duo <laughs> together it's a very good team we have a great lineup going it's is that, exciting is that also why you really call it we are connected like a secret message to within the band yeah it's also i mean every time we play like south of france we see eric forrest and he, he comes on stage with us to sing travel conviction or every time we go to san francisco we see jason and he Last month he came to play with us on stage and in San Francisco, he played Voivod. So it's like a big family, uh, Voivod, and We Are Connected is about it's all the members. It's kind of like a reunion. Yeah, and uh, I mean Blackie, Eric Forrest, Jason, uh, it's all a big family. I uh, once read that uh, the new players in the band, uh, Chewie and Rocky, they were once for their first gig ever that they visited, that was a show by Voivod? Yes, yeah. yes, for the Nothing Face tour. And uh, they, they were fans, uh, when, I, when they saw the show, they became fans immediately, and so Chewy, in particular, uh, he knows every song from every era of Voivod. It's just crazy. Yeah. That's what happens with good music. <laughs> but it must, be, uh, must, must have been a very weird experience for them to be a fan of a band and then play it. It's a dream come true for them and, and they tell me that it sort of uh, justifies all the work they put into learning their instruments. Now they feel like they did, they, they uh, rehearse so much for something. It's, it, it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I can also see when you're on stage, it's, it's a real unit, it's a... Oh yeah, 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 it's a, we get along really, really well, for sure, yeah. Uh, back to the, the last EP, when I, I listen to that, I hear a very refreshed sound. Uh, can it be that this is a, the start of a new phase for Voivod? Yeah. It does have ingredients from the 80s, the 90s and the Jason years, but with a new twist. And it's where we're heading for. And um, the um, reviews were really positive, so it's encouraging for us. So we are writing a concept album right now, like 10 new songs for Century Media. Okay, yeah. and that's going to be your next album? Yes, yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> A lot of your compositions have, a, you know, like you said, a post-apocalyptic science fiction theme. Yeah. I was wondering, are you also a, a person who likes to watch science fiction? Yeah. And then old movies or maybe newer ones, what do you prefer? Oh, I like very old movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still or uh, Incredible Shrinking Man or the Roger Corman stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, and but I um, 
I love like uh, the uh, 80s uh, movies like Mad Max, Blade Runner, but I also love newer movies. Um, even when it's remakes of older movies like Tron or the latest Mad Max or you know, um, I, I'm a big fan of sci-fi movies but I would say that uh, the, the things that um, influenced me the most in terms of uh, my concept you know, uh, um, were documentaries uh, from the 80s, uh, one called If You Love This Planet uh, about nuclear weapons and that really really opened my eyes to uh, a piles of nuclear weapons uh, all over the world and all that so uh, and there was a, a made for TV movie in the early 80s called The Day After yeah, I yeah remember that, that really really opened my eyes as well it was really well done I remember people were watching it and uh, didn't see it was a documentary. They thought it was real. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, when you come in the middle of the movie and you shut yeah. the TV. Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean because it's really well done. People got scared of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they should have been, I mean, they should be scared of nuclear war because it's, it's still possible, you know? Yeah. We still talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. Cold War has never really left, exactly. I think, in a no. way. And it's nights full on, you know. Yeah. I was wondering, you have released so many great songs. How do you make a, good, uh, a set list for a concert? It's tough, especially at festivals where we have to play 45 or, or 50 minutes. You know, then it's we have to uh, narrow it down. It's tough, uh, but we uh, tend to uh, have like two or three different set lists that we alternate every night. So if there are some people following us, at least they get to see different shows, and it's refreshing for us as well. Yeah. Don't you miss the the older sound of the band when you still made like the thrash metal years? What? Don't you miss those years? No. I mean, it was exciting because we were all like um, thrash metal in the mid '80s was exploding. And we were touring with our friends, Celtic Frost, Destruction, Creator, Possess, and everybody, you know. And we we were all like 20 years old, and uh, it was very exciting. Um, and but um, I never really stopped enjoying uh, playing live. And we were we're lucky we have a loyal following, so we can keep going and play and see our friends every year again and uh, and again and again. And uh, so. For 30, 33 years I've been in the band and, it, and it's been exciting all the way through. There were some disasters like accidents on the road or uh, uh, Piggy passing away, or, but uh, overall yeah, it's been amazing. Oh, that's good to hear. The next question is from a visitor of the website. His name is Dago Duck. And he wonders, did you know that you were playing at the place that used to be a graveyard. When? This afternoon. I had no idea. The square <laughs> Into the, the grave. Square, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. It was an old graveyard. Like, like a graveyard for warriors or like uh, for, for... No, it was, I think it was cleaned about more than 100 years ago already. Okay. Wow, but I didn't know It was the that. oldest one in that town. Oh, interesting, I didn't know. Have you, uh, that made me wonder, have you ever played at other weird places? Well, we played in uh, Germany once in a slaughterhouse. It was called the slaughterhouse. <laughs> and uh, um, um, we, I, we played a, a fort uh, in, in Toronto once where there were many uh, uh, buried uh, soldiers from... Uh, and. Um, from I don't know when, and, uh, and so it was another cemetery. Uh, we we had our share of weird places, that's for sure. Because <laughs> uh, I must have played about four thousand times in my life. <laughs> As you said before, you have been on the road with Voivod now for more than thirty-three years. Yeah. When you look back at those years, what have become the highlights for you personally? I would say that. In 1990, when we toured with Rush um, in Canada, was probably my highlight. But uh, we also toured with Ozzy and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and Motorhead. So to meet my heroes, you know, it's been very uh, enjoyable. 
Yeah, although uh, when I meet my heroes, I'm a bit silent. <laughs> um, but uh, it's always great. Uh, I will cherish that forever. Okay, I'm already uh, up to the last question. Yeah? Any future plans besides new album? Yes, we're coming back in Europe in October and November with Entomb AD. And then we're gonna work on the new album and try to deliver it to Century Media early next year. And then we, um, we'll have a busy schedule uh, as well uh, in terms of touring. We write on the road and record between tours. Okay. And so it's like a machine, a factory. Yeah. No choice. <laughs> and you wait till you have the songs worked out and then you go to the studio? Yeah, yes. Um, Nowadays we try to record three or four songs at a time and then go on the road and then write more in the on the road. We set up a small studio in the van or in the bus with a laptop, you know. And then uh, so we record a bunch of songs and put them together. But next album, since it's a concept album, we might have to uh, we might have to record the whole thing all together yeah. to make it like uh, solid. You know? yeah. Anything you want to say to the readers of fuck.nl? Yeah, I just want to thank the Iron Gang, the people who uh, they've been in, into Voivod for so long. It's because of them that we keep going. It's so fun to see them every year, everywhere. And also, every time we release something, they buy it. And it's just amazing that after 33 years, I'm still like traveling the world like that. It's, I, I owe it to them, so thank you.